Hi, welcome to my workshop, which is actually my mess shop. So, <laughs> anyways, today I'm going to be shaving down the back of this uh, Harmony archtop guitar. I just got done putting in a truss rod and uh, this put on a new fretboard. It's an actual uh, rosewood that I scabbed off another guitar. Uh, it's a little bit thinner than the original fretboard, um, so I had to shave the sides, as you can see, um, to get it to fit. But now I'm going to shave the back to make it more playable, because it's pretty thick for the way I like it. Um, a lot of people might cringe at the fact that I'm changing this, but uh, you know what? These things, they're not worth a ton of dough, but they're just funner than heck to play. So um, I would really like to be able to save that uh, finish on there. It's kind of a fake uh, maple look on there. It looks like flame, but it's not. It's just uh, paint magic they do at the factory back in the 60s and 50s or whatever it was. But anyways, this guitar actually plays great now. Man, it's just got great action all the way up the net. You can just, uh, you can kind of... So you can play the whole thing all the way up the neck. And then it sounds good down here too. That's a good tone. They're not Gibsons. Uh, but they got their place, their own place. They're fun to play. They're very inspiring. But anyways, um, I'm going to show you how I shave the back of the neck. It's it's not real uh, hard to do or anything like that. But uh, I'll show you how I do it. This is the tool I use to get the contour of the neck right here. And it's pretty interesting. They're, they're cheap, but you can just buy it at many hardware store. But you just press them on the neck. And, um, well, I'll, I'll use another guitar real quick. Um, I have, here's a neck that I shaved years ago um, on this old uh, Yamaha. Um, it came out pretty good. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, you just put this on the back, shove it on there, like so, and you get the contour. Now, this neck is a different, um, width and everything but it gives you the general idea you can tell well let's see if I can make this show on here to kind of show you where we're at I don't know if you can tell it's not uh, not that different it's just a little bit thicker so uh, we're gonna use this as a general guide and during the process a lot of people use rasps a lot of people use uh, um, big files and grinders and whatever, but my tool of, tool of choice is this right here. It's a great little tool because I also use it as a straight edge. Uh, I find high frets with it because you can put on the front it rocks and so very useful little tool. But uh, all I'm gonna do is use this as a scraper. So I'll show you how I do that here in a second. Okay, just for fun, I'd show, I thought I'd show you this one here I did. Now this here is another Harmony arch top that I did recently and uh, it's a fun little guitar. This, this one was really messed up But you can see this thing here was a baseball bat and it was just you know I Love these guitars, but I want them to play like I want them to, to play uh, And so it's quite a bit thinner profile than it started out I I don't know how much I took off, but I took off quite a bit. But anyways uh, so just to show you, it can be done. This one here got a uh, scavenged uh, fretboard on it too, so. Now, you can't see me, but you can see the guitar. Now this guitar here that I did earlier, I'm gonna use this as a reference point because I like the way the profile in this neck fits. And if I measure here, you'll notice that this thing here is just about Nine point one five, so uh, and fifteen thousand. So that's what I'm going to shoot for there. And I and I do it with the strings on. Both of them got the same strings on it. Uh, I just measure at the second fret, and then I do the same thing over here. And it kind of gives me just a guesstimation of where I where I'm going to put it at, just for fun. 
this here is just, it's roughly one inch so uh yeah I'm gonna take off probably 90 to 100 thousandths is all so anyhow I'll get started um, now this looks pretty barbaric I'm sure for a lot of people but uh, you know it works the thing the reason I like the scrapers because you can take off a little at a time you don't and you're not like taking a big swipe with a raft and going oopsie uh, so yeah so um, basically what I do is I scrape the top first and it'll go flat until I get the right measurements at probably about the ninth fret, ninth or tenth fret, and the second fret. That's how I kind of do that. And when I get it scraped to that thing, then I start shaping the sides. So I'll show you how that kind of goes. And anyways, I just start back here and I just start scraping. That's all there is to it. And I love using this too because it uh, also transitions easily here so I don't great get any great big ledges uh, at this end or at this end down here. So that's the neat thing about using a scraper and just using a little bit at a time. Pretty barbaric, huh? It doesn't really take too, too long. You can already see that I've taken a little bit off here. You do it for a while, it's kind of satisfying. You know, this may be a slow way to do it, but this way it's more controlled. You can see that's really, I don't know if you can tell, but let's see, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it goes flat. So. The one thing I want to make sure is I don't get into the uh, cavity where the truss rod is. Uh, the truss rod, uh, the steel rod that was in here was rather thick, so I had to fill quite a bit to put the truss rod in. And so I don't really want to get there uh, to that point. It'll uh, start looking like a like a skunk stripe or something on a Fender guitar. Anyway. actually quite quickly um, each scrape I don't know how many how much I'm taking it off but periodically I go back and I just kind of put my gauge on there and see and so we have gone so far uh, about 25 thousandths so we got a you know we got another 60 to go or so till I get down to where I want it to be. Okay, so we'll keep cruising. As you're scraping, it gets wider and wider so you don't get as much each each time to scrape, but the resistance gets quite a bit more. But not quite as scary as you think. I know the first time I did it I was a little bit freaked out, but after I did a couple, I was so I'm so pleased with the results that I get that uh, um, confidence grows and then I just keep doing it. So whenever I get a guitar I really like and if it's too, you know, the not to my liking as far as the profile, I can change it. So a lot of people might say, well, why don't you just sell that guitar and, 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 and find one uh, that's uh, your profile? Well, I'm kind of a do-it-yourselfer, and I can't help myself. <laughs> when I'm done with it, I'm going to paint, I'll seal it and paint it black.
Okay. There are about 50,000 to go. Well, about 48,000 to go. So, like I said, it goes pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I didn't take a measurement on the... Uh, on the ninth fret. So let's do that. Seventh, maybe the seventh, eighth fret. Let's find out. Let's see. Ah, right about it. Starts transitioning right about there. So let's go with the eighth fret. Okay. That is... One inch and thirty thousandths. Oh no, it's not. Take it back. Take it back. It's uh, nine point three. So, yeah, is that right? Oh no, it is. It is one. Oopsie. <laughs> okay, that would be one. Actually, it's one inch, almost exactly, 1.05. So that's what we're going to go on this one, too, probably. 1.05, and where we're at now is... one oh point forty. So, another 25 thousandths there. So, we'll keep cruising. Just call me Dave the Barbarian. <laughs> I wonder how many people are going to just freak out. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, let's check it out. Let's see. Another maybe thirty thousands, I guess, to go there. And here, let's check it out. Yeah, we're getting close. We're getting close. Another twenty thousand, twenty-five thousands there. So let's keep on cruising. Now I suppose I could take the strings off and do this, but. Maybe I'm just lazy. It doesn't seem to hurt anything. Okay, we got uh, 20 to go. Getting close. Got 20. So I'm going to focus up on this edge just a little bit more than the bottom. I'll lighten up a little bit because this is going quicker than the top piece. So that's the neat thing about it is um, when you're scraping, you can lighten up here and then bring more pressure down here. You can see this how this is wider. So I think I got a little bit more tougher down there, but that's okay. I can make up, I can make up the difference. That's the neat thing about using the uh, scraper. Scraper. You can really, you know, do it gently and make it the way you want it. Oops, phone. Yeah, about another ten thousand to go on that. And here. one here we're probably close to 20. <laughs> All right I guess I focused on the top a little bit too much that time. That's okay. I can make up the difference. And actually there's no rocket scientistry stuff to this. You know when you buy a guitar it's just what it is. You know between here and here thicknesses. So if I went got to my ultimate thickness here and if I was off by 10 or 15, I probably wouldn't notice up in that area. And the funny thing is when you play guitar, you know, a lot of guys will put their thumb right on the back of the neck and then a lot of guys, like me included, will run my the back of my thumb up higher here. So 
The thickness of the neck down here is not as critical as the contour in this area, you know. And I uh, hardly ever touch this down here at all, even when I'm playing it's, uh, well I guess I rest this against the side coming up and down. So uh, I don't even really notice this. So the I want to get the same on this side as that side, but it's not all that critical apparently. Of course then if you're making a fine piece of furniture you want everything to be, you know, symmetric somewhat. Okay, looks like I got it down where I needed to be. And uh, I might even got just a little bit lower, which is fine, just by a few thousand. So that is like, uh, yeah, that is exactly where the other one is. And so basically, I'm right where I want to be. So now, we're going to start, uh, you can see how flat, I don't know if you can see how flat that is right there. I'm going to try and get it close, but let's see. See how that's flat? I'll uh, maybe get this on there. You can see how flat that kind of is. So now I need to start shaping the sides. And at first I just start shaving it because I know it's a lot has got to come off. And then I start using my uh, shaper gauge, this guy right here. Right now you can kind of see we're way off. <laughs> so, a lot of scraping to do still. But you'll notice that didn't take all that long. I'll start with this side here. When I get done, when I get this down pretty close to where I want it to be, then I get the sandpaper and I go across this way to, to you know, take out all any flat spots to the left. Anyway, no need for you guys to watch me do this. It's pretty much the same thing over and over again for quite some time. Okay, we can see that uh, I'm getting close on the one side here. Um, I'm going to get to the other side pretty soon, but uh, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. But it's really coming into a nice transition this way. Um, I like it kind of thin in here, so it kind of takes an, a sharper angle. A lot of guys like this, like a D shape, but uh, I like a little something. Uh, so it's kind of like maybe even slightly flattish on the top, but I'm, but it's coming along good. I'm going to start working on the other side now. And uh, well, I guess you can watch a few seconds of that, and then I'll bring it back in in a minute. Something therapeutic about this, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's my imagination. <laughs> okay, um, I took an impression off the guitar I'm trying to match, and now I'm going to bring it down on here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very good, but I'm going to go ahead and just lay this down on here. And now that's a little bit thicker fretboard, but the contour is very close. And uh, so now I'm going to take an impression of the about the seventh fret and bring it down. You see where we're at there. Seventh fret being right about there. And I don't know if you can tell or not. And that's just dead on right now. So I think we're done. I'm about ready to start sanding. Can you see that? Right? Let's see. About there you can kind of see. I've actually taken the sides in a little bit more than the other one, which I think I would prefer. We'll see. 
So I'm about ready now to get some sandpaper and start sanding it across this way to take out any flat spots that are in there. So I'll go get some sandpaper. Well, actually, I'm going to take a little more off right there because I can feel the flat spot still. It won't take long to take that off. Actually, the sandpaper will probably take that all away. Oh, yeah, it's already. Oh, yeah. Maybe right in there. I can still feel some flatness, so I can just take the crown off a little bit. Oh, yeah. take much when you get down to this point. Yep, that's good. I'm ready for sandpaper. I'll be right back. Okay, this is just some 120 I have. Now, I don't go like this. I kind of go like that because I don't want to hit the binding on the side. So as long as I hold it out, we're fine. And it doesn't take much to knock this thing all the little uh, scraping it. This thing's, uh, the scraper is flat. So Every time you scrape it, it's a flat little surface, and you can actually feel that. So that's what the sandpaper doing now is we're taking all those off, and uh, so that it's got a good transition. And it doesn't take much; it takes a couple, a couple minutes, and then we go back and forth once we get to the, get all the knocked down. That, that's it. Honestly, that's it. Now, I just take sandpaper and piece some more 120. And now I'll have to go ahead and, once I'm done with the 120, I'll take it up to 300 or so, or two, two, uh, two something, and do it. And then once I'm done, I got it all transitioned perfectly in here. Uh, I'll take a little wet rag, go over it, let it dry, knock off all the things that rose, and then I'll do it again. And then what I'm going to do is just put on some... Uh, some uh, sanding sealer just to seal it up it makes it real hard and then once it cools or once it warms up outside here it's a I think it's pretty cold outside I'll go ahead and paint it and I'll do it with a rattle can a lacquer acrylic lacquer that I get at the hardware store and I'll paint that and then I'll put a clear coat on top of it which I'm not going to do like I said until the weather gets uh, more agreeable I could heat my shop out back up but and I might do that still. I don't know. We'll just wait and see. But anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish sanding this, and I'll bring you back in a minute. I guess I'll show you the sanding portion. I don't know why I turned it off. But anyways, you just back and forth and get it real smooth. about it for now uh, I don't know if that's too bright to see or not uh, so I'll turn it so you can kind of have an idea but the uh, playability of this thing is quite a bit better <laughs> sealer out okay so you just take a rag I, I've already sanded it with some four up to 400 and so now I just get it wet a couple of times I've already done it once it's the second time and then just let that dry and then I'm gonna knock it back down with 400 I might do it two more times and then I'll put the sealer on it 
Okay, I've wetted this down about three or four times now, and it is pretty darn smooth. Last time I got it wet, hardly anything uh, rose up, so uh, I think we're ready for the sealer. And I use this stuff. I, a guy talked me into buying this when I was at a, a wood store in Seattle down near, uh, oh, not quite to Ballard, kind of right at the Aurora Bridge, I forget what the shop's called. But it's a wood, it's a water-based grain filler, which I thought, man. Eh. But I bought it, and man, I really like it. I don't put it on the way they say to. I put now this stuff I've reconstituted a few times, kind of chunky now, but it still works great. Uh, so I get it on my hand, and I put it on with my fingers, and I and I don't wipe it off. I just put it on um, and let it dry, and that way it builds up quicker. And uh, I just spread it, and I really work it in. And, uh, and then it sands out really nice, and it's, and it, it's kind of like a finish in itself. It's very hard, and uh, I've actually done a few necks on electric guitars that I play that I put this on and, and no other finish. And uh, so it's actually pretty neat stuff, I think. Pretty, pretty good. But it sands great as well. So I'm not part of the company or anything. I'm not advertising for them. Uh, but it's pretty good stuff. If I were to look at it, I would kind of think it kind of looks like Elmer's glue, except chunky now, anyway. Good stuff. I like it. And I just put it on, like I said, and I don't wipe it off. I just make sure that it's good and smooth, and I and I kind of keep going back and forth, and I feel like uh, when I do that, it kind of hydraulics it in or whatever. Or I don't know if that's the right word. But uh, anyways, that's all I do. I try and get it all on there real even and not extra on there so it dries quickly and it does dry quickly in about 15 minutes I'll be down here sanding this and um, then I'll put another coat on I might even put two more coats on uh, it does kind of stack up a little bit and that's about all there is to that with that dry um, I'm going to put a little bit on the sides here. Where I might put a pickup on this one like I did my other one. Um, it's got room, don't have room, much room under here, and I don't want to cut a hole in it. So I followed the advice of another guy on YouTube, and I wish I could remember his name. But I took this old P90 pickup I had, I took the magnets off the back, and uh, then I uh, put in some. Uh, Stratocaster uh, pole pieces, which are magnetized, I had to drill holes out for them and stuff them in there, and then uh, it got that thing as thin as I possibly could, and then I screwed it in from the top, and and just one little hole for the wire, and uh, worked out really good. Didn't have to, and that way didn't have to cut a hole through the braces. So I'll probably do that to this one as well. Anyways, we'll wait for this to dry, and then I'll bring it back. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, um, and it's dry, <laughs> so I'm just going to very lightly go over it, just just lightly. Any of you that do body work, this is, it's a little bit tougher than um, sanding sealer or a, um, primer, but not much. So, I mean, it really does knock down quickly, so it doesn't take much to really get this here to be you know, silky smooth. You can see how quickly it's coming off. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's flaking off pretty good. So, anyways, there it is. Now, wipe it off real quick with a wet rag again. And when that dries, I'm going to put another coat. Well, it's dry. <laughs> well, it's almost dry. But it doesn't really matter. It's water-based anyway, so I could actually put it on right now. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to. Put a little bit more on with my finger. And then, uh, I think this will be the last coat on there. And then I'll give it a quick sanding, and then uh, and that'll be it for now. In the summertime, if you're using this stuff, you got to work fast because it almost cures while you're putting it on. 
Right now I'm getting a little bit more uh, time to play around with it. Crystal lac. Once again, I'll show it to you. Crystal lac. <laughs> Good stuff. There's a million ways to get this kind of thing done. And it's just as one. This is how I like to do it. I didn't, no one showed me. I just kind of sat there and figured it out one day and thought, huh, I wonder if I can do that. Because I've had some guitars over the years I thought were really cool, but they're just hard to play because of the neck. And so just spend a little time on, the, on uh, shaving and it works out real good. So I'll bring you back in a sec. Once that dries, I'll sand it and I'll show you. Once again, that's dry, so I'll hit it again with some uh, 400. And that's about it for now. If it was uh, warm out, I'd be painting it tonight. But uh, it's not warm. Now when I do go to paint it, I'm gonna spend a lot more time fairing. It's actually quite, you can barely feel it between the paint and the wood now with the sealer on there and then sanding it a bit. But uh, before I go to painting it, I'll be uh, spending some time making sure that, that you won't notice that transition. You know, it's got, it's got to be butt smooth. <laughs> but this sand's pretty good, and uh, I think we're about there for now. that down with a damp cloth and uh, you'll notice it does it's got a different color now it's not soaking in into the wood anymore because the wood is basically sealed I'm going to take this uh, micro mesh or not micro mesh microfiber and just dry it off and that is basically it now I is that too bright I'm gonna turn off one of these lights hopefully you can see it a little bit better um, but it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. It's almost like a finish. It's kind of a satin finish sort of dealy. Um, but honestly, that's a nice playing neck now. This guitar for me, now I don't play jazz. You know, uh, I'm kind of a honky-tonk sort of uh, bluesy sort of you know, like country uh, rock and stuff like that. That's what I play. And so. Uh, I'm not a jazz player, so I don't need a big old fat neck and... Anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I uh, hope that uh, somebody, you know, in the future, if you're going to try this, you know, it doesn't look, it doesn't seem that hard after seeing somebody do it. So maybe uh, start with some cheap old guitar like I did and then work your way up to some stuff that's uh, a little bit better. Now there's a million ways to do this and I know a lot of people are going to go, look at that barbarian, but hey, what the hell. <laughs> Thanks for watching.